Welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, we will be talking about, we will be continuing to learn about uh, REST Assure, and we'll be talking specifically about response specification and deserialization. We already talked about request specification and serialization. We'll be talking about uh, response and deserialization. And I'll be posting the link for these videos for the, the, the whole set of videos that I did, a playlist. And you can uh, see everything that we have done so far, right? So uh, let's continue, right? We, we are on the English master branch. And now we can go into request specification, right? So we already have here a, uh, sorry, a response specification. We already have here a request specification, which is going to be for all the requests. I now can do rest assured that response specification response specification and this follows the same the same pattern that we followed in the request i'm going to do a response spec builder and in this one i want to show you that i'm not setting because this is not a request i'm now expecting and i have a bunch of expecting types i can expect content type status code, response time, body, cookie, uh, headers, uh, a bunch of stuff. So pick your choice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, status code. So let's say I expect all my status code to be 200. And I have to do build. So it's going to build that for me. All right, so I'm going to rerun all my tests. And you're going to see that some tests is going to fail because some of the tests they are not expecting 200. We have we have created tests that are expecting expecting 201. We have created tests that are expecting other other errors, right? So if you go here, this is expecting bad request, right? And this is expecting uh, 201 uh, created, right? So uh, there is no point of doing that generalization here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to expect that my content type is JSON because I'm dealing with a uh, JSON uh, API. So now I can rerun everything and I can say, hey, I do expect my content type to be JSON, right? So create another commit, git status. That's my uh, alias for git status, git add dot what did we do we created a um, re base test add response spec to base test right and we can now continue with there is one thing that we can do I can I can also have multiple setups for my different setups depending on my on my on my test right so this base test is a setup for all my tests so this is a generic setup but i can have like say let's say on my register i have i identify that i'm using something in common between all my tests and just i can definitely do a setup here so i don't have to be uh, recreating everything so i'm going to create a new test right so this test I'm going to show you that you can have a, you, you can even have a response specification uh, specifically for that test. So I'm going to create a login unsuccessfully just because it's the same of the register unsuccessfully response. This is 400, right? Normally I would create a new test saying login test, but just for the sake of, uh, of being able to show you this functionality, I'm going to create it here. So this is going to be a new test. It's going to be a public void uh, test. Unable to login. And I'm going to do a comment here, just a reminder. This test should be in the login test. But to show a functionality but it it is here in order to show the uh, 
response spec just for one test one test class awesome so now you know that this is just to show you this functionality and what i have here it's a login what what do we need to do it's a login unsuccessful login api login email i send an email and i don't send the password so it's pretty much the same as here so i'm just going to copy everything here and i'm going to make it pretty awesome so i'm able to log in just the email set now the endpoint right so this is login user and it's slash login right so let me run the test just to make sure it's passing great my test is passing but i need to send login user in the endpoint right login user of i missed the endpoint so it's endpoint and i also missed the endpoint here so shift f6 is going to reflect everything and it's going to uh, make sure it all you it uses is going to be updated so awesome login user it's working the way that we're expecting and now i can do a i can come here and i can do another public static void setup i cannot use now it's going to be a before class right and i can definitely do this i don't need all of this because this is going to be already there i'm going to use this one copy and paste just because i got lazy right and now i expect this expect status code to be uh this one but also I can run this it's going to fail because it's saying now that connection got refused it's because I'm using the same test uh, name here so it's overriding it so I, I don't I cannot use so this is, this is a static before class I cannot have the same one this is overriding so what I'm going to do is set up register or register set up register is good set up register awesome so I can rerun and now it's working and I can delete this I don't need this and I don't need this and I can run everything Great, and now I can run my whole set of tests. So it's divided, right? So the register test is first using the base test setup, and then it's using its own setup. While the user test does not have its own setup, and it's using uh, only the base test, right? So one of the things that are important for us to realize is what should I put on my setup and what should I shouldn't put on my setup. So you can see that I'm using the same user here. I could easily move this to this setup up here and remove the given. But let's let's take a moment and see how the test would look like just like this, right? I'm not going to put it there because it's, I don't want to do that. I just want to show you how that would look like uh, if this was just so. When I do a post, then I see the body, right? But then it's not just when I do a post. I do a post with the user being set and missing the email. And this information would be, let's say here, right? this information would be right here. This is a small test enough that I can actually read it really, really easily. But then when my suite gets really big, then I start to have hidden stuff on my test. So my test is the what my test is doing is not only on my test. I need to realize that other methods is also doing 
some stuff for my test. And this is not good. I don't like it, right? So, so there is no, I can I could use this, but then there is no reference to that user here. I would have to figure out where it's at. That's not really readable. So I rather leave it here, right? We're going to improve this when we use Lombok in Builders. But right now I'm going to leave it like this because I don't want to have hidden stuff on, on, on my code. I want my test to be atomic, right? Everything that's there, it's, it's readable. I, I don't have to go and, and, and look and sort for other stuff, All right? So this is great. So now I can do a commit, which was add response spec on register test setup. Awesome. Great. Uh, also the response, right? You need to be pay attention that your response, uh, your test should also be readable or uh, and your response should be really uh, easy for you to understand what it's doing. This is a little bit hidden too, uh, but this is an enable test. Uh, you can see that's an error. Uh, you, it's, it's easier to guess that you also are expecting a, uh, an error or HTTP error, but just bear in mind that your test should be, should state everything that it's doing. Cool. So what else did I separate us to show you? Now we are going to go into deserialization. Awesome. Great. So one of the things that we are going to do, I'm going to have another test that is just for a single user. So this is just a single user test. I, I send the user and the user ID, and we're going to create this test first before we do serialization. So this is going to be so let me put here on top of the private public void um, test show user show users show specific user. So we're going to be doing very similar to a test that we specify the user, right? So this is very similar test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a given. I'm going to say I would like to do a param, pass param, right? because this is going to be a little different. Uh, and the pass param is I want a user ID, I'm calling a user ID, and it's the user two, which is the user that we have been using it so far. And when I'm doing when, I'm going to show you why I'm using pass param. Now I can say I want to do a get on that endpoint. And the endpoint was slash users slash two, slash users slash two. But I don't want to put two here, right? That's my pass param that's going to be able, I'll be able to use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass on the pass parameter between curly brackets here. And now I can do, then I expect to be uh, status code HTTP 200. All right, this is good so far. All right, so if I run this, oh, I need to mark as a test. Forgot about that. So if I run here, it's passing, right? So make sure that these two are the same. They need to be the same because this two is going to become, this is a variable with the value of two, and this is where the variable is going to be used. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to do the same thing that we have been doing here. So this is a show user endpoint. And I'm going to use the same thing that we did here. I don't need this, nor this. So now the users, user ID, it's here. And now I can copy the endpoint and run this test again. And it's going to work exactly the same, right? Awesome. Right, so how can we do deserialization 
here, right? One of the things that we can do is, I can pretty much say then I expect the return to be S, and then I already have a, a few options of S for classes, user class, user, this is my, I need to import the one, our one, not all the users, dot class. I expect this to be returned as a class. And of course, I need to put this on a variable. And that variable is going to be a user variable. Right. Awesome. So now I can definitely run this. And it's going to get all this content here and it's going to try to map into a user class. And I got an error. Why I got an error? So let's take a, a look at it. Uh, unrecognized field data, not marked as ignored. Three known properties. So the first thing is our user test has only name, job, and email. And here it already has data, has ID as probably advertisement. So these we are at, we only have a few of these. So we need to tell which one we care about, right? So Jackson gives give us the possibility of saying, hey, some of these can be unknown. So I can say Jason, ignore properties. And I can say unknown, ignore unknown to be true. And I'm going to rerun my test. It passed, right? But now let's let's actually understand why it passed because I'm not asserting anything, right? Since I'm using the then return, I cannot expect anything else because this is already a user. So what I can do, I can say now assert that. And I need to import the assert that, and crash assert that, that the user dot email is, or I can I can duplicate to what we have similar there contains regress dot in. Right, so something that we already did somewhere here, I think. Uh, yeah. Can't find it. So let's rerun this. It failed, right? Because it's new. Although, so let's let's run this as a debug mode, so I can put a. a a breakpoint and I can rerun this test in debug mode. Let's take a look at the user. Oh, everything is new, right? So no. Why everything is new? Because although it's ignoring the data, it does not know how to get email and first name and last name. So I need to tell it, I need to be more specific what I need to do here, right? So I need to come to my user and I need to say a, a few other, a few things, right? Before I, I come to my user, I need to tell that it needs to get, it needs to create the user based on what, it, what is inside data, because otherwise it, it's looking for the email in the root of the JSON. So I need to change this a little, I need to change uh, where no, not the register user one. I need to change this a little. Um, instead of doing the then return, I need to say I need to tell I want to. Let me remove this. Extract. I need to do is I need to do a then so let's do this then 
status code is going to be HTTP 200. And after you do that, I would like to extract the body from the JSON path. And I would like you to get an object out of it. And the path of, of the object is data. And what you're going to do with that, you're going to transform that into a user.class. Awesome. So let's see if that works. So if I rerun my test, it worked. So, but then we still need to pay attention at some stuff. So let me rerun the test with debug mode. And you're going to notice that the user, the name and the job are missing. Right? Why the name and the job are missing? There is no job here, but there is first name and last name. And we do not have first name here. And we do not have last name here. So how can how can we do that? So Rest assured, uh, sorry, Jackson helps me creating aliases. So now it's not, not, this is not only a class, but this also is dealing with a JSON and JSON can, become, can come in different naming for that same attribute. So what I can do, I can, say, I can tell Jackson to do a JSON alias and say that the name attribute is also a first name. I can tell that. I, I do care about the last name. So another thing that I can do is I can say that the private string last name is a JSON alias. Or last name. And let's create the get and setter for the last name right so now if i stop my test and rerun it in uh, debug mode now my name is with janet just the name because i put the alias of first name and last name is here because i also put an alias right so now i do i can i can finally i can check that I can come here on my user test and I can say, I would like the user name to be Janet. And I'd like the user last name to be Weaver. And I can rerun this test. And it's there. So I can rerun everything. Everything's working. So what I can do now is create a commit, of course. And this commit is going to be uh, modify user domain class for JSON wording. Awesome. So let's create a new branch and the branch is going to be git checkout dash b English six. And what did we do? It was deserialization and uh, what else did we do? What this realization and response spec. Great. Git push origin and the name of my branch. And it's there. So thank you for watching. Uh, we still have a little uh, some of the stuff to show. I still want to talk about uh, Lombok and how we can make everything related to my Java class cleaner. 
so stay tuned to the next videos. Please subscribe. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And I see you on next video. Thank you.